Hey guys, Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Trailer Hub and Drub Assembly. This is the 3,500 pound Easy Lube type axle, 10 inches in diameter with a 5 on 4.5 inch bolt pattern. Here's what our hub's going to look like installed. As you can see, this is going to be the exact perfect replacement for what we're looking for. It's going to eliminate a lot of the issues with this galvanized finish that we typically get in coastal areas, really humid areas, or in the rust belt. When they're using a lot of salt on the roads or there's a lot of salt in the area, corrosion becomes an issue. This customer uses this trailer as his work trailer. He uses it every day when he needs it. And he just doesn't want to have to worry about it. That's why we've put a brand new brake assembly on put a brand new hub on with that galvanized finish so we really shouldn't have any issues. Now this is an easy lube type of hub. It's designed to fit 10 inch diameter brakes and it offers the five on four and a half bolt pattern. Now that size is going to be very common. It's going to help to ensure that it works with your Alco, Lippert, Dexter and Axletech as a direct replacement. Now taking a minute to compare this to other products that we have available there's really no big difference in them. This is especially going to be better than buying your parts individually and having them fail one by one and having to take everything apart and put them back together. Even comparing them to more expensive type brands, they're right in line and offer the same quality. Now in getting to the assemblies, we need to remove our drum here, or if you're going to be doing the drum as well, kind of like we are, we need to get this off. And now in order to do that, this cap's gonna have to come off. We're just gonna use a dead blow hammer. And if we kinda tap out on it as we rotate, you see it's gonna come off. That one came off pretty quick. They take sometimes a little bit longer than that. But once you get that off, we're gonna clean this grease off. That's gonna allow us to get to the keeper. You can see with that grease off, you can see this one has a cotter pin. It's gonna be right here. Some of them are gonna have different styles. Some of them will have like a keeper that slides over and it doesn't really matter which one you've got, just hang on to it because we will be reusing it. So here are the cotter pin, we need to straighten that guy out and then begin to push it downward so we can get a hold of it on its bottom side. Now we just want to back off this large nut. We're going to hang on to this, we'll be reusing it just like our keeper there. These aren't very tight generally, so just a pair of pliers, those will come off. And then we're gonna wiggle our drum just a little bit here. And then right here on the end, we're gonna have this thrust washer. We're gonna get that off. Now, if you're getting a new hub, like what we're gonna be doing, we're going with a galvanized hub just to eliminate a lot of this rusting issue, then you won't need to keep your bearings. You won't need to keep your hub or the seal. If you're not replacing this, if you're just going to be replacing the brake assembly, hang on to these things so you can put them back together. And once that's off, we're going to clean everything up really well. We need to inspect our spindle here. We're going to be looking for any type of damage to it. We're going to be looking for any signs of like major heat. If you see any discoloration on it. Our seal rides right on this lip. So we want to make sure that's nice and clean and free of defect. We've got our inner bearing that's going to go here, outer bearing is going to go here. So we just want to make sure everything's nice and smooth. We don't see any cracking, no discoloration. And this one looks really good. Now it's time for us to get our bearings packed. These are going to go on our new hub. This is going to be the inner bearing. It's going to fit right up there. Our seal is going to be behind it, protecting it. Our outer bearing, that's going to go here. That's going to go on after we get the hub installed. And I like that. And that's what our actual hub is going to ride on. We need to get these packed with grease first and take you through that process. We're going to be using Ultra Lube. We have this available on our website. If you don't have grease at home, you'll want to go this route. I guess except if you're going to be doing it in like a, uh, in a marine application. If you're going to be doing it in a marine application, you might want to use a marine grade grease. Our customer here is just going to be utility. What I like to do is just force it in through this larger gap here. And I'm going to force it in enough to where I see it come out of the other side. I'll just work one section at a time. 
Now you can see it right up there, starting to kind of come out of that top area. So you just want to work that all the way around. And with our bearings packed, we're going to take our inner bearing, that's the larger of the two, we're going to put it with that taper facing in, so the narrower part in. It's going to sit down and in for us. And we've got our seal. Now we offer a seal driver. I use that quite a bit. I like using the seal driver. You could also use a block of wood, dead blow hammer like what we're using here. The biggest thing is just not to use something that's going to damage our seal. We just want to get it gently worked in there, then kind of go around it, slowly drive it in. And this should go down and sit just about flush with the back side of the hub. See, just like that. Something else I really appreciate since we are replacing the hub, it's got the galvanized finish inside and out with the exception of our working surfaces. So the area here, that's going to be our braking surface. You can see really good new machine material there. And that'll be where our magnet rides. It's very important, especially when we switch these out, that we have these nice clean surfaces so everything can work really well. It really gives us optimized braking as opposed to just putting our old drums back on. Now we'll slide that over. I have to wiggle it a little bit to get it in place, but you'll feel it come to a pretty good stop there. At that point, we've got our outer bearing. That's going to slide in, should center everything up. Then we'll take the washer we took off before, wipe off any old grease there. That's going to slide on. We'll take our nut and clean the old grease off that, and we can gently thread that on. All right. You can see we've run that down, and at that point, I feel that binding. It's a little bit tight. I always like to run it all the way down, though, so I know everything's seated properly. And we're going to back it off just a little bit there. Just want to make sure when we push in and out, we don't have any play. Now we need one of the gaps, in, the, in our setup anyway, we need one of our gaps here to line up with the hole. That's going to allow us to get that cotter pin through. Might have to tap it a little bit. Now once that's through, I'm going to grab each side there and get it tilted or get it twisted. Now we've got our end cap and that black rubber cap there is for your easy lube spindle. That way we can get into that grease dirt. Just want to take that down so that seam makes contact. Now let's take our cap off there. That'll allow us to get to our grease dirt. And we'll just slowly add grease in there until we start seeing it come out forward. Once we see that, we'll be in good shape. Alright, we'll just cap it back off. Time to get our wheel and tire put back on. Not only get the hub, we get the new grease cap, all the new bearings and seals, but we're also going to get new lug nuts. So basically, with the exception of the tire and rim itself, you're going to be brand new from the brakes out. Now to test everything out, of course, we want to make sure our connections are right. So we'll hook up our truck, or you can hook up a trailer tester, get the wheel spinning, have them apply the brakes, and make sure it stops. It's ideal, as you can see, nice and solid there. Go ahead and release. Should release cleanly, and we'll be ready to head down the road again.